yep. So I've sent you the slides for the four o'clock. So you can just look at it and discuss with Tasha. And after that, you'll write something for us. Okay. We're nearly right. finishing on the uh, emergency Bilberry's Blue Lighthouses already. Yeah. Let's go. have to make a decision by, by tomorrow. So today we will listen to everybody. We'll look at the, the grants. We'll talk about love in the afternoon. Then two o'clock, we will now we'll see who will come. We'll look at the grant application. We have to write something together. Uh, then tomorrow we submit everything. <laughs> God, we are three. No, we can wait another week because the deadline is June 11. But yeah, maybe we'll wait another week. Now it's uh, what's next week? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I found a way this year. No, today. In your final session for some school. Sorry, mm. what is it? Today is our final session for some school, you know. Yes, that's why we have to decide. Yeah. The summer school, when are we going to start it? Uh, I have to share with you all the Tampoto Foundation grant, the thinking, the application. Yep, so we have yeah. to decide it together. Uh, let me think how to do this, okay. Mm. Where are the others? Huh? We just, well, it's 201, we'll wait for them. I will look for it. Uh, summer school, summer school, yeah, yeah. Yep, this is the, this is the registration portal. Is it moving when I do this? Is it moving? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yep. So this is the application process. We'll mm. look at it together. Then we will make our decision. Um, the other piece of work was uh, the community to character framework that we've built. Last week it was a tree. Now it's a whole framework. And then we have to choose which part of it will go into this. Okay. We'll have to read this together. So we just wait for others. This Tasha, no, we're we're coming. We're having this session. Can you text Tasha and see where she is? Can you text Jin and the rest? Can you check? Can you text the summer school WhatsApp group? Going to get a drink, Alan. I just need nothing and a wish. That's all. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. That's okay. Hello. Hmm. Oh, it's Ejin. Hello, Hello Ejin. How are you? I've already started recording. Yes. Do you think Andromeda and Ika and the rest are coming today? I'm not really sure. Okay, today, today is the fifth day already. <laughs> we have to decide already.
<laughs> I don't I love your note. <laughs> We give how Ellen should we take uh, we give five more minutes or we proceed? Maybe we can proceed first. Okay, let's proceed. Okay, let's so um oh, I am having hang on. Are you seeing the screen, Ajin? Are you seeing the screen? Ajin? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're seeing the screen? Okay. Yeah. So it yeah. says here, yeah. how do I submit my proposal? Oh, so I I've... think my internet is a bit shaky. Let me change a spot. Yeah, your video is also not coming up. Ah, Andromeda is in. That's good. Where is Tasha? I'm, I'm surprised. Andromeda, hello. Hi. How's your week been? Okay, uh, AJ was trying to find another spot, but I'm just going to get started ready because uh, the latest I have to close at 3.15 today, okay? Uh, I have another meeting to prepare for at 4 o'clock, okay? Uh, so this is the portal. Uh, today will be the day we're going to frame our application. Uh, so they have a OFI. So the OFI starts like this. Okay, let me, let me go through. Yeah, so later we will put our username here. I haven't done anything because I want to do it together with all of us. So the application process, uh, June 11, they're going to review between June to July to see if our, uh, our application makes the cut or not. Okay, so by July 30th, uh, we will know. And then from August, September, October, it's actually the full proposal submission. So, in other words, we still have time to flesh it out. Okay. So today or between now and June 11, we really need to crystallize uh, an application submission uh, that, that is worthy of the invitation to submit a full proposal. Okay. So, we will know that uh, we will need to submit our full proposal by June 10. Hello. Hello. Can you hear? Ah, Saif is here. Hello, hello. Saif, we started and we started recording oh, yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the machine prompted me as always. Hello. Uh -huh. Good, 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 good. Uh, hello. So, Hi, Alan. How are you, handsome? Hi, good. How are you, handsome young man? Of course, I will answer that man. <laughs> I like your your glasses, so nice. Thanks. Uh, you know, I cannot wear that look. Yeah. As Auntie Pengen, I cannot wear that I look. think you can. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm going to get to work, Saifi. Yeah. Okay, so we, we, we have to submit by June 11. June just, 11. Just an OFI, okay? 
But the OFI mm. has to be crisp enough uh, that we will get an invitation to submit a full proposal. So it looks mm. like we have time to mm -hmm. flesh it all out. Okay, yep. and we will know whether we get our full proposal by June 10. So I think mm. don't wait until June 11. Um, no, shouldn't. I, I think today we may not be able to write it, but over the next week we should. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and for the OFI at least. Um, but the fleshing out, we have done a lot of background work as well, right? This week, mm -hmm. a lot, a lot, a lot uh, of intense work uh, and, and basically validating um, what's in the community. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, this uh, phase two HA came about. Uh, so that that has a big change, I think, for what we're going to do the next um, six months to a year now. Uh, so there is then this OFI that we need to go to. Uh, and they don't want us to write the whole thing in here in the OFI. They just want a succinct but detailed project description. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is where you're going to come in and help us like chuk, 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 it down, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, what okay. I, at this point, I will always uh, tell all of you, when you are doing these things, right, it's fine to overwrite um, because, you know, you're starting off all these things because it also means that you have substance. That means you have details and you have actual things to put in there, right? But at the same time, try to start disciplining yourselves and always remember K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it short and sweet, right? Because it also shows um, what kind of focus you have, right? When you are able to say in three words what other people need 30 words for, yeah? But at the same time, at least if you have a lot more things to say, that's better than nothing to say, right? So that, that is just something to bear in mind, okay? Uh, sorry, I got, I got a little distracted because I think Tasha is trying to come in and she's not sure which link it is. Let me just send Right now, the... it's Alan, Andromeda and Ajin, right? Yeah, uh, I'll just... Uh, can somebody... Wait, hang on now. Uh. I'm not co-hosting, so I can't bring Tasha in. I can send the link to her? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ejin. Yeah, uh, and anybody who can help bring Tasha in, okay. So, I, I am reading further down. Uh, we have to consider our cost of our activities, the scope, all that we've, we've kind of, will be able to do. Uh, So they're, they're looking at around 200,000 to a million or 50,000 to 3 million. I don't think we are as big enough to, to get 3 million. So we will probably be targeting a million. A million, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the project can be over three years. It can be for 501c3. It's actually not proper fit in US, but We've written but in we are not registered in the US, so that they say it's okay. It's for this competition. It's for international. Sure. Um, actually, even not for not for profit, it is qualifies. But I, I think you send a better chance through a not for profit. Yeah. Uh, so this is where I misread it the first time. Mm. I thought it was July one, twenty twenty one. That's why I was right. pushing the acceleration of the VB lighthouses. Yeah. But it's actually July 1, 2022. Yep. Yep. So, uh, well, the youth stewardship is already started. Mm. It, it won't be able to fund the youth stewardship. But if we haven't started uh, BB Lighthouses, mm -hmm. or we start it as a prototype, but not the full rollout, then I think the fun uh, these funds can still fund the, the lighthouses. Uh, the summer school, uh, I think the fund should be used to do the preparation as well, rather than we prepare it and then just run it in July. And looking at the situation of everywhere in the world, I think the summer school is looking like it's in 2023. Absolutely. What's everybody's sense? Ejin and Andromeda, do you, do you all agree? And Nika as well, huh? Mm. 
do you all agree based on like the situation that you're seeing in COVID and what, what's your sense? I feel like um, I'm not really sure because it'll be in the UK, right? Yeah. Um, things are, are looking better in the UK. But um, Ejin and the rest, um, when we talk about COVID, mm -hmm. Auntie Pengen and I will always tell you and remind you, this is a global thing. So mm -hmm. you can't divorce countries like that. You can't say, for example, oh, I'm going to the UK. How is the situation there? But people are coming from different countries around the world. So to leave your country is already a different set of problems. To go to another country is another set of issues. To come back to your own countries are, you know, they face challenges as well. So in other words, when you are looking at this pandemic, uh, you cannot uh, take a very simple one vector kind of approach. So when we ask you to start uh, assessing, even projecting into the future, right? Uh, in Bilbury's view, we always have a multidisciplinary, that means multi-perspective approach, right? Uh, do not do not just think, oh, we're going UK. So just think about the UK, for example. Uh, it involves, you know, complex uh, issues in that sense of the word. Yeah? Mm, okay. Then mm. I think 2023 is okay. Yeah, and, and we have to cater for, our target was 100. And uh, we the first summer school will cover the, the global youth stewards. I, I, feel, I feel we're taking too much risk in 2022 because even this one, we had planned for the move of BB Studio on May 22nd. Boom! Everything changed. I still haven't moved yeah, and can't. I can't even get the packers in, you know, yeah. because I had to reboot the place for, for two weeks. Nothing. Because we, we don't we, we now know that COVID is airborne as well, right? And they are now publicly saying that. Yes. So so and and the variants as well. So we've got one two rounds of variants, UK variants, India variant. We may get more variants. Um and we need to wait for the vaccine to essentially be able to cater to all these variants and probably vaccine that are safe for the adolescents as well and children because we're now seeing the, the children also catching COVID which we didn't see so much last year so so that's that's my hard sense I, I it was a very hard place to come to the day before it was yesterday that Washima, Bernie and I also spoke um, especially after Bernie left the session uh, I, I just had to be very frank with everybody and, and basically just say 2022 doesn't look real. And if Bilberry's Blue is about being real and we don't deliver empty promises, then, then we've got to say it's 2023. How does everyone feel about that? But at least it's real, right? It's a real target. It's real and I think we adopt what you've been adopting long before we went back into lockdowns, right? Which is BCM. So business continuity model is not about not doing anything. Business continuity model is not about, oh, I'm doing something different, right? It's not. I mean, we both know, and I'm sure, you know, Alan, Natasha, Engine, Andromeda by now know as well. What it simply means is that now that we are living under the specter of COVID-19, there is plan A, there is plan B, and then there's plan C. But plan A plus plan B plus plan C equals to what? we are doing. It's just we are doing it in slightly different ways or different, what we say, modus operandi, meaning different me methods of operation, right? Um, so at the end of the day, uh, we mustn't ourselves fall into the trap of thinking that, oh, now we are not able to do what we wanted to do. So now we're doing something different. Because once we do that, Right then, we lose track of the fact. No, we're still doing the same thing. It's just that because of COVID, we've got to do it in a different way, in a different manner, in a different fashion, over different time frame as well. Mm. Right. Um, so, on that note, just a final point to make it even real. For example, today, right? Um, I can't go into the office, but I've been online since six a.m. in the morning. 
doing my policy work for my office and at nine o'clock I had office meetings and I only stopped at one o'clock to have lunch with my mum and then at 2.05 then I'm logged on now here to talk to all of you. But it's still doing what I need to do, right? Instead of going to the office, right? Instead of having coffee with uh, Pengen somewhere in Bukit Timah, for example, right? Then, you know, uh, I'm meeting online. So this is a very important point to remember because I think people are starting to lose sight of that precisely because we are now in an extended period of, you know, fighting the fight against COVID. So we're going further and further away from what we think as our own lives, right? And therefore, there's a nostalgia that is associated with our own life. So you think that now, what we're living is a different life. It's not. You're still living what you are. You're still breathing oxygen. You're still drinking water. It's just that before we climb out of this pandemic, we are just doing things differently. But I don't... I, Cannot stress this enough. We are still doing the same things that we need to do. Okay? So never, never fo lose focus of that any one of you. Okay? I like that, Saif. Yeah. Um, the, the continuity and the tenacity almost to continue in this kind of very... Um, cla the clarity and determination, right? Is, is a, it's what's going to... It's, it's what defines us actually as Bilberry's blue, you know. Mm, mm. Yeah, and that's we, also we, what will differentiate us from those who then yeah. um, take, you know, uh, uh, you know, I won't say easy options because maybe that's a bit unfair. But for example, many people now leverage technology. So webinars, left, right, center, you know, for all sorts of organizations, right? And then they think, okay, that's it. Webinar is the way to go. But they don't think the next step. So doing webinars or Zoom or Skype or MS Teams or whatever, it's just a means towards that end. So what is that end in and of itself, you see? Yeah. So we are very clear what we want to do, obviously, and we want to do good. So yeah. that's so important. I, I think for today, it's five Thursdays to Cambridge. Uh, we say what we want to do, we do it. It's about Bilbury's Blue Summer School funding, okay? So we will lock down the parameters, okay? July 2023 would fit this, would fit this, okay? Uh, it's quite easy to budget a summer school. We could budget for three years, three summer schools or two summer schools. Uh, let me see. Uh, I think we still budget for July 2022 because that's when... Oh, uh, we can't because it would mean that I don't think when I don't know when they're going to give us the funding to do the the work. You well, know what said I mean? No earlier than July 2022. So the point is that you know we also have our own inbuilt flexibility. If they can no, but it. it's it's more about when are they going to give the funding? Yeah. So that we can actually, uh, you see, I don't want to do work ahead anymore. We need to match our work with the grants. So if the grants only come in July 1st, then it will take a year to, to organize mm -hmm. July 2023. Mm -hmm. But if we find out later that they, they will give us the, the money for us to have a summer school in 2022 frame, time frame, then mm -hmm. of course we can plan for that. But I think it's, it's but then the world may be all cleared by, net, by then, maybe better than now. So we don't know, but these are the parameters, okay? Yeah. So, so yeah. we don't want to be doing all the work ahead and then after that, uh, the funding comes or the funding gets snagged and then um, we've made all these promises to everybody. I, I don't think that's the way to go. So sure. I, I would prefer to say July 2023, lock it down. Mm. Don't, don't offer the July 2022 summer school anymore. Right. Okay? July 2023. My question now is, uh, the funding, the foundation provide funding for projects up to 35 months in duration. Okay, 33 months in all other organizations. Yeah. I think our project has a component of a not-for-profit, which is One Love, and has a component of Bilberry's Blue, which uh, we've, we've basically released all our, our knowledge, right, mm -hmm. on the internet. But, Organizationally, it's still a, a for-profit. Uh, and we have other elements in Bilberry's Blue that is for-profit. So I would stick to a 33 months. 
time frame. Can somebody log this down? Uh? 1 July 2022, count 33 months, that's our time frame. And then in that time frame, maybe we do two summer schools. Or, are you, or do you all think we can do three summer schools? Can you hear from the rest? Yeah. Would you prefer we do two summer schools or three summer schools? So this is how I was organizing the strategy uh, and the context, the strategic context of uh, the summer school. Uh, hang on a second. Just trying to open it up. Okay. Just give me a second, sorry. No worries. Hmm. Ah, okay. So our three framework is here. I took the Templeton Foundation for formulation of character development and fitted our discussions in here. Okay. So all our people program, uh, I'm seeing this is Popples actually. And so we have a summer school that does the content expansion. So this is the context of the summer school. The lighthouses, I think it's actually a space and community um, exploration. Tube is, of course, our thinking and our knowledge and multidisciplinary and all that. So uh, the summer school is a place where maybe it's a bit like Kwashima's edu retreat. You know, you go somewhere, go to a travel. Not, not really sure. It's up to us to define still. But, but that's how we are activating our content expansion. Okay, so from the tree, the roots, the trunk, the fruits and the flowers, and every one of the youth stewards are going to contribute to this shared visioning, mm. um, which is why we set up the Cohort One channel at Jin. And Nika, thanks for setting that up. Uh, we can, we can uh, essentially hear and deepen this uh, our our character conceptualization of character here, okay, and all the essays and etc. So so Saif is kind of uh, looking at this piece. Um, then we have a lot of people programs, and I went back all the way. Uh, we actually have zero to twelve, to thirty six to hundred, you know, and we also said that the youths we will extend it from eighteen to thirty five, so the youth stewardship program can be opened up for up to thirty five years old. Uh, the uh, same with the apprenticeship as well. Okay, so so these pieces. Uh, then we we are actually now this section here came from the Templeton uh, Foundation formulation. So they are looking at new curriculum, new communal practices, new opportunities. So that's really us, and I think that's what the summer school is about. So we take we take this this maybe one year of uh, it's going to be 18 months already, right? Starting from January of observing all these things and then essentially formulate a summer school in Cambridge, but we are actually like a summer school <laughs> if you think about it. But I think we want this in person. I think maybe that's the differentiating factor. So this is a space. This is in person. Like, like Saif said, Everybody's gone webinar and thinking that's that's learning and that's engagement. It it isn't, you know, we're we're humans. We really need in person. So 
we need we need to keep as a vision um, that we will meet in person. That so so that's what it is. Uh, doing this fully inclusive sustainable entrepreneurism. Uh, these are some of the organizational capacity that they will look at us at our eligibility for being funded. Uh, whether whether we have all this governance and we are going to weave in the UNDP SDG impact standards here in in our tube sustainable enterprise uh, functions. Okay, and how we're going to do this is using the lighthouse as a place of observing how this is done by the youths. Um, the lighthouse keepers, so far that we've gone around talking to everybody and the leadership in town, whether it's business or community or educational leadership, uh, they are of the view that the, the lighthouse is uh, best led by the youth stewards. So we're going to step aside and let you all lead this and we guide with, with basically, you know, the way we are, we are guiding the... So it, it looks like we're guiding the youth stewards to lead the lighthouses yeah. and also the summer school, right? Mm -hmm. Because you practice in the lighthouse because it's kind of where you are and then the summer school. And see whether we can have an idea what the platform would look like, the tech platform that connects us all. Um, and this piece also was in their framework, and we have said we will be self communication community evaluation now. Evaluation will have voice and participation in a much more rich, uh, free form way, more akin to art. Um, and then we've got our pedagogical documentation uh, with the academic rigor, actually. Huh? Sorry? Mm. It yes. is. It is. Mm. Um, and then we have essentially the compliance reporting, which will hit home accountability mm. um, and enable accountability from all, all aspects, okay? As ESG, essentially, and the UNDP SDG. Uh, so we've, we've looked at that. Um, there's some frameworks that are coming out really quite good, and we are going to align that very quickly, and we won't reinvent the wheel, okay? So that we, we concentrate back here. Okay, and the empowerment of leadership, of stewardship. In our corporate governance structure of Bilberry's Blue, we already have 12 enterprises. Okay, it's like this. Okay, we have 12 archetypes and we have 12 archetype enterprises. So now we are trying to uh, park the, the strategic uh, components, right? the strategic threats um, of this vision. Uh, the vision is a character, character, communities of character, actually, communities of character for sustainable development. So we have communities of character, so communities of practices, right? That's how they say it. So character to community for sustainable development. So from this fully inclusive sustainable entrepreneurism, we're aligning it with the UNDP uh, articulation, which is sustainable development. So, so we are birth to lifelong and intergenerational, and of course we are fully inclusive. So I thought that was not really necessary already, since it's very clear that our approach, the reason why we're doing this is not because we're greedy. Um, the reason we're doing this is because uh, we feel that... Uh, a true formation of an individual um, really has to be in the context uh, of birth to lifelong and intergenerational, more like a family. So, so this was uh, the perspective that uh, Bernie had really uh, wisely made us nail down. So if this is the case, uh, I think the organization most suited to, to regulate um, our work relating to people development uh, would be One Love Limited, which is a not-for-profit and which already has a mandate in its constitution for a fully inclusive uh, humanity. And some of the prototype work has actually been 
uh, documented here, not even fully documented yet because we ran out of resources and time because we were going, going, going. Um, but with this, we had the track record uh, of uh, uh, running these programs. Um, and, and then I think that the BB Lighthouses, uh, given its nature of it being uh, pretty much about youth stewardship leading, uh, and less so about revenue generating, I would park it here. So we, I would recommend we park it here. Uh, same mm. with the summer school. It has a much more um, educational formation kind of thing. Because if, if we park it here, what happens is you'll be very pressurized to, mm. to make profits. So I've seen that. So also a very hard decision for me because I don't really like to put things under a not-for-profit umbrella, you know. But I, this, this is my, my own recreation or my own change. Um, I, I think I, this is the right place well, for it. Well, sometimes it's just semantics, yeah. right? Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. So yeah, I mean, but sometimes you not might react world. to something yeah. being tomato, but if somebody says, oh, I have tomatoes, then you might suddenly <laughs> like it. Right. Yeah. So the point is, like, you know, we can't be also. It's, it's how we it's how we define it. But people do right. fall into the charitable organization headiness or or sure. learn helplessness very quickly as well. So, so I've sure. seen that. I try to avoid that. You know, our core of our work ends up like that. But I think you're right. I, we I would be able also, to define it for yeah. ourselves and drive. Also, and drive I think the more energy. importantly is to, especially for our, you know, lighthouse keepers slash. Youth stewards. Uh, remember, we've got twelve archetypal sustainable enterprises, and why we are pegging at the UN SDGs, which is very basically the Sustainable Development Goals, is because under the UN Development Goals there are seventeen goals, one seven. Okay, so in other words. Um, we are talking about the whole world. So 17 goals is actually quite limited, to be brutally honest, but they've made it generic enough that they can easily, countries or communities within countries, pick and choose what they want to do. Therefore, by looking at that governance principles of the UN and then fitting into the UN SDGs as well, we can have the, the flexibility of the work and when we are working with partners, especially when we are drawing money, to be able to accommodate them as well in the kind of work that they want to do, whether it's in energy or reducing inequalities or looking at quality education, clean water and sanitation. And guess what? All these things are UN Sustainable Development Goals. You know, they are. So when we look at building the ESG, economy, right, we can retrofit, as we call it in engineering terms, right, and then put it into those things, uh, not in a theoretical perspective, but in order to do the work, right. So I also want to stress this because some of you want, you think UN, you think, oh, that's based in New York, that's high politics, that's 179 countries that lost last count. So you think this is something that has got nothing to do with you and has got nothing to do with us. But it's got everything to do with us because it is the benchmark now for countries. And because precisely we are in COVID, countries have no other standards except the UN. Right? So the UN is the standard. Uh, and on a final note, the WHO is essentially a UN body. And all of you know what is WHO, World Health Organization. That's why when we talk about COVID, people don't talk about, you know, the Malayalam Association of India. They don't talk about the Eurasian Association of Singapore. They don't talk about the Artist Alliance of the world. They don't even talk about Médecins Sans Frontières, uh, Doctors Without Borders. They talk about WHO because that is the go-to gold standard. That is the benchmark. So I, I want all of you to understand this as well. When we benchmark, we're not benchmarking against, you know, what Pengen and I will know as lembit standards. Means very weak, right? 
very eh, you know very eh, you know we we are going for benchmarks which are solid which are cast iron and people will see that you know we are professional about that you see so that's what i also want you to understand because i understand also you see words like un and development goals straight away your eyes glaze over because you think what has that got to do with us right so that is what it's got to do with us this is a serious enterprise and we are going for you know benchmarks and standards that people understand especially professionals especially when you make a pitch to the templeton foundation yeah so th th that's my way of explaining things yeah so yeah so saif you just um brought us all home again you know to governance thank you for that um and the concreteness of it and benchmarking whenever you do something you you have to benchmark if not you you may you may go into a, a little hubris bubble you know so so that's very important and we don't want to do that so what we've done is we've embedded it into our corporate uh, corporate governance these standards okay uh and hopefully we can build our own uh esg toolkit that is not so complex but if there's no choice we will follow some other people's uh, uh esg toolkits you know, and uh, there is a vision 2050 going around uh, by the World Business Council of uh, Business Leaders. Uh, pardon my reference, okay? But um, that's that's the 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 body of work that we've we've done relating to governance so far. Well, we have our own governance simple principle, which is of dignity. Now, um, the world is. On, on sustainable enterprises, moving towards uh, assurance work, benchmarking these standards. So it's actually very exciting. This uh, UNDP impact standards for enterprises is actually coming out. It's in draft two now, it's coming out this year. Once it crystallized this, uh, I think there is an opportunity for us um, to really learn about the assurance standards and perhaps even be able to offer services um, and, and shape the, the application of these standards, you know, in, in our own uh, ecosystem of uh, businesses. So this, this, this is actually very exciting. I think they have a tie up with Duke University. So, so when we talk about uh, opportunities and all that, although our earlier conversation and work has been somewhat many people will say you're just sitting around and talking it isn't because um the world wasn't there yet but now it is so we're going to shift very fast into action here uh, and saif is right we have uh, 12 archetypal organizations that we can then work with partners or clients even um or or incubate even more uh, different kind of projects okay so for the youth stewards we feel that um, the Lighthouse and the Summer School basically gives uh, the best opportunity for uh, the voice and participation. And, and, and you don't need to go so much into market stewardship. But we will, once this starts to move fast, it's a bit like this uh, project, right? The Summer School funding project. We pulled a few of you out to, to look at it. Hey, Amir is actually joined us as well. Yes. Yes, that's great. Yeah. So yeah. So so I think this is how this the dynamism of the youth stewardship program is going to start to kick in. Um the program is now every month still reflecting on the four milestones. We will keep to that. But as this thing starts to take off very fast, right? Whoever is interested in any of these areas, right? we would start uh, ask giving, offering the opportunities. So that's the whole idea of, uh, of this framework. Okay. Is it, is it clearer now? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I so it's much more clearer now. Yeah, it's clear for us. Now you can see the, the beauty of Blueberry's Blue. We, we are emergent and we, we stay to that uh, honesty of that. If you ask me in January whether I, I knew it's going to be like that, no. Because I only found out about this about two weeks ago. <laughs> you know, so I, I love the dynamism of our, our new opportunities and new world, which is why I think, you know, the sooner we get more and more youth uh, getting engaged into this work, uh, the, the more exciting it is. Because 
it's so new and there's so much to do um, and there's so much that we can uh, co-create together. So, so if you look at a summer school, it really just requires an operational team. The event partnership will be uh, with uh, Cambridge, Fitzwilliam College, and then it's travel and accommodation operationally. And then you have to work a four weeks curriculum. That is birth to lifelong intergenerational. And that is about character to community for sustainable development, which is kind of like this whole done, this whole thing. <laughs> okay. This is the curriculum, isn't it? And it's a very living curriculum, right? Whatever we've learned, whatever we are doing, whatever we are, feeds right into the, the next piece of work. So that's why our work is, has a pedagogical documentation kind of referencing. So by the time, if we have some, our first summer school is July 2023, then what is the most meaningful thing you think in that four weeks that we'll be working on, right? So this is asking us to project this, um, grant application is actually making us project post pandemic, you know. What is, yeah, what is most meaningful post pandemic, July 2023? So in July 2023, when we meet in Fitzwilliam College, Cambridge, where are we? What is the curriculum? Okay, and how? Yeah, and then on the lighthouses, uh, Saif, mm -hmm. I don't know whether to pair these two up for this grant application or not. I think that uh, needs to be really looked at in terms of are we ourselves looking at lump sum funding, which mm. then you know will be divvied up, or are we looking at really specific? projects um, they have they have some and guidance. The rubric is very very important obviously you see. they have a they have a guidance here that's why i'm of two minds here they yeah. said that uh 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 that's why I, I i picked those paragraphs out and put it into the whatsapp channel right it's i think uh where is it i'm planning to apply the the, the Okay, here it is. Should my community of practice only... Okay, okay, this is not... Yeah, you, you can submit a few OFI from what I gathered here. Mm -hmm. But if we feel that this whole thing is actually one concept, then I would submit... I would submit the two together because the, the, the summer school, I don't know actually, I don't know. Let me show you what the other work that I've done. Then maybe we can have a better decision on this. Uh, By the way, Peng Yen, um, yeah? Maravik just texted saying that she won't be able to make it. She has a test today. Okay, okay, no worries, thank you. No test, test, test go first. And don't worry, tell her don't worry too because there's a lot of uh, opportunities later on. And, and uh, well, well, to input. let me also share, like, for example, my yeah. own experience because I'm with an intergovernmental foundation of 51 countries and two uh, organizations. Yeah. So, in other words, mm -hmm. 53 members. So, right now, we're doing the budget for next year. And um, one thing I'm learning myself is that, for example, if we're doing a particular uh, event or project, we have to very be clear what we are talking about. For example, say I'm doing a 25th anniversary event, right? That could be the project. And under it, I can have three activities. But I myself must be very clear when I use words like project, event, activity. So I think that is also the discipline that all of us going forward need to start having a common vocabulary so that people don't, you know, uh, even among themselves, let alone partners who we engage outside, they do not get confused. Are we talking about 
an event? Are we talking about a project? Are we talking about a recurring activity? Are we talking about something which is a line article of a particular program, for example? You see? And I think that is important at this stage because an important stage that is, because we are now thinking about the funding. And like Peng and mentioned, so do we apply for <laughs> you know one funding for everything, or are we specifically breaking it down already to say two components, for example? You see? And I guess my additional thought on the matter is about prioritization. So when you talk about events as well, then you prioritize which are the ones which you think are realizable that you can make happen before the other one. And therefore, that one will be where the resources will flow towards. And when we say resources, we talk about the funding, we talk about the energy, we talk about the person, we talk about the human power and the focus, right? So that's what we talk about in terms of resources. So when we talk about funding, uh, you cannot run away from those issues as well. Yeah, okay. that's exactly what we need. So we were going, so that's the early on of kind of strategy ideation. So now we're going to operational. Really. Right. So, so that's why we need the crystallization of yeah. our own internal vocabulary. Right. So where I started to map out was this, that uh, we were really essentially uh, defining the character, the, the ideal character. And I think, Yesterday, the work that we did came to a point of inner core, uh, reflect, reflecting uh, pedagogically that which is beautiful. Okay. So, because we like simple things, right? We like to distill into that. Uh, so that's, that's how uh, Washima and Bernie and I was listening to them. And it's essentially, that's, that's how the emergence of the uh, lighthouses have, are going to be based on okay, the foundation of it. Um, and I think when I was looking at this, now I, I remember why space is so important because humans in a space and social ecological uh, culture requires the interaction with the space. So it, unless you interact and act it out, you won't really even know um, how you will relate to it when you care for the environment. You might think that you'll care, but circumstances yeah. are so hard that you don't care. Then you have to care, right? Um, then, then so, I think, so I think to extend so, even beyond Templeton's viewpoint about character through community, it's actually character through space and communities. So looking at this, can I just ask a very silly question? So annual plan 2H2021 to, to, to FY2025, and then I see Qs. So is H for half? Yeah. Is two H second half? Yeah, yeah. These, these are the the um okay. type of frameworks in the uh, enterprises. So okay. yeah, it, okay. it, no, it, I just wanted to be clear about that because I see three Q to four Q to O to five. So <laughs> if we want to be much more standardized. Oh uh, yeah, I, I think I made a mistake one, here. I I yeah here four Q was to uh, O to one as well. You see. No, or I think I think it was for another slide. That's that's a mistake here. Uh, yeah. So this one will be actually twenty twenty three to twenty twenty five because yeah. you see things are shifting. So I was doing this and so I, I change all these. I change all these dates. Twenty. So, you know, Peng knows this, but you know, mm -hmm. unfortunately, the rest of you uh, don't know me yeah, well enough. But uh, I have uh, served for 27 years in government. So I will see your punctuation marks and I will- <laughs> It's <clear>. great. <laughs> it's exactly why we love working Whether together. It's in yellow or orange and we'll ask you. And if you start telling me, uh, 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 and try to lie to me, I will know you're lying to me. Yeah. So, so I'm going to go, I'm going to do, I'm going to do it like this. So, okay, these dates here, ignore because- Yeah, that one had is- a massive fine. change yesterday, okay? Yeah, and you need I think to I kind of two days ago. But so this that, was yeah. right before that. Um, this is an old plan, okay? So this was uh, uh, written for, uh, for actually the existing discussions with uh, the secondary schools and, 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 sure. and all that. And I had, we had framed the lighthouse 
having a development guideline and then having an annual plan. And they had asked, what was the annual plan going to look like for the next six months? And I went and did it for five years because you can't do six months without five years <laughs> since yeah. our, our umbrella direction is five years, you know. So, so, this, so but this will set the framework then every, every year you will go in and do and do the plan for the following year. And it needs to be approved by the board. It needs to be approved by the space partners as well. So, so we're actually in the process of writing an agreement with a secondary school in Singapore. Mm -hmm. you know? And we don't want that process to buckle if it gets too vague or too complex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so it's, it's an art. Uh, so, so what I thought I, I have, would do is map it all out so that they can give comments on it mm -hmm. and then we can we can uh, basically fine tune it right because people get stressed or people get bored that means if you're not bringing anything new then why am i taking the effort like Saif said there's so much going on everyone is prioritizing especially mm -hmm. for this second half of uh, 2021 mm -hmm. right Absolutely. Yeah. and maybe even for the following year so, so, so first, there is a need for the value add. And uh, um, so what is it that we're bringing that is so different from everybody else? Uh, and we have to be clear about that. So, so I re-articulated our strategy here. We have a very strong BCP COVID-19, a plan and an implementation that is still currently ongoing. Uh, and that was in, in Malaysia. It birthed from Malaysian experience. So that's even more challenging than being in Singapore. And we have two, uh, the book and the learning series. Okay. Although the book is authored seemingly by one person, but it's shared a lot of people's work. And same with the learning series. I sat and listened to everybody in Compile and it's deepening anyway now uh, as, as we are implementing it for the first half of this year. So, But as concrete stuff that we're bringing in, uh, we have a concept paper on moving forward in a deep learning world and the POP learning series. So POP is places of possibilities, which I think Lighthouse is one such uh, manifestation of places of possibilities. Mm. Playfuse was how we took all these concepts and imagine it, reimagine it in, in a township development, which is a SDG hub cities concept. Okay, uh, Saif, your governance paper is actually in, in here. I haven't put it down. So uh, I think it's here. Okay. Correct, right, Saif? Hmm. I think we finished this body of work in, uh, in January to no, uh, November. That's why we were confident. Oh, sorry, I had put it here, see? I haven't forgotten. It's there, yeah. It's there, it's there. Yeah. So I'm very authentic to the dates as well. Uh, because mm -hmm. as we're innovating, that is what keeps us real and sane. Uh. The second we shift away from our own tracking uh, of when we yeah. do things, we will be lost. Okay? Because nobody is nobody is watching you anymore. So 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 we are very, very clear uh, in our accountability, in our authenticity. So I think it was around December when that paper came out. And then we were able to have a summer school ideation. We ran a BB Solstice uh, and then we launched the uh, Youth Stewardship Program. And the program partners were amazing. We didn't give them very much time, but they understood the urgency of having to kickstart a Youth Stewardship Program. So this is where you see the partners responding to us so quickly because they understood uh, and uh, aligned with the and are committed to uh, responding to the urgency of uh, the needs of the youth for youth stewardship. So, mm -hmm. so that's how I think this was I was mapping out, reflecting on. So, in order to do so something new, you always have to take the lens that you have now and look back into the past and understood why why did you emerge all these things? You know, didn't do things for for fun. You know, it's fun, but it's it's not. It's not like for recreational reason, you know. It's it, it for 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 Bilberry's Blue. It, it has a very serious uh, mission towards its vision, right? So so you can see then uh, there was a search. That, 
So, so I've trapped all this under strategy and this is how we would uh, hope that uh, the culture of Bill Boris Blue knows how to start tracking things down, you know. And then although in a month you do maybe 10,000 activities, you are still, your eye is on exactly what you are developing, which thread or which, you know, project stream or which core components. So, Saif knows I struggle with articulating this, so he's listening in and then he will start to, to shape this for me, okay? Because uh, I work very creatively and organically. So, so when, remember five weeks ago when Washima said, hey, you just do it. So this is what they mean, okay? So I, and I've gotten it here, us here already. Five Thursdays to Cambridge, today is the fifth Thursday, right? So, then, so then, so the evolution of the strategy is starting to settle down already with the UNDP uh, standards coming in. So I think, I think the pace for this will not be as organic as this anymore. I think we've done a lot, a lot of the core work. Uh, so the compliance and performance reporting are starting to kick in now for us to be able to, to story share our, our accountability, okay? And lead the way on this as well. Um, the space and mobility, as I said, because it's a space in a community, space and communities, uh, we have to shift from BB Studio, which BB Studio will need a new place. So we started the hosting the open studios. Uh, and then what we're seeing is one of the treasury that we have is the library collection and then our own documentation, you know, and all of you have written such rich stuff and contributed, right? That's the other thing that we, we need to, to really uh, figure how we can make this very visible and, and pull it out as one of our core, strong cores. Um, we also have an amazing, amazing ecosystem of collaborators now from the five years and then the last six months just accelerated it as well. And the recent round uh, with the, with the, lo with the uh, leaders, the community leaders, through the open studios. It was just wonderful. So I think we have a process that works very, very well, Saif. This, this whole ability to, to engage partners and engage them really fast. And the choice and the commitment by the partners to engage with us and to work with us, you know. Um, and, and giving forth like, okay, we give you a space here. You know, uh, and just going all out to make everything happen. So, so there's something that we're doing very, very right. And then we've got the stewards and, and the apprentices. So you can see that it's very structured, although sometimes we look that we are not structured. We are very structured. So one of the feedbacks that came back when uh, was uh, somebody said, BB Studio is actually a home with an invisible system, a semicolon, a safe haven. The invisible system is this. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so when you have structure, because life is in space, life is in community, and life is in time. So it's, it's very important that uh, how you spend your time is, is very important. So how an organization spends its time. And can you imagine we have all these layers of groups of people from birth to lifelong and intergenerationally. So, so I think Bill Burris Blue is very highly skilled, you know, in uh, communities through character <laughs> for sustainable development, if we may say so. You, know. you see, when you pitch for a competition or, or anything, you must know where your strengths are. And you, must, you don't need to mince your words on it because you have already done your reflection. You've done your benchmarking. And so you need to articulate uh, where are we strong, where are we not. I, I think Saif, you had a, somebody had written it down. Yeah. So I, I think if, if I were to objectively look at us, uh, where we're very strong in is the ability to tie all these pieces together. That's been validated by the, all the partner discussions that we've had. Um, even SG Enable was inviting us uh, to have a, uh, to a space potentially. So these are the people who have said, okay, let's look at it. So I have ambitiously put it one lighthouse every month, which I probably would have pushed, we would have pushed it through, but suddenly by yesterday, I said, no, no, this is too fast. And 
the next six months in Singapore was not what it was going to be like the first week of May. You know, we, we thought we were out of the woods and then suddenly it came back in again. The wolf is back. So, um, I almost think that this schedule has to be pushed back yeah, six months, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that's where we are. June, you see, close project, Templeton. You know, here, we are kind of here now. Uh, we've got clarity about this. We've even got the annual plan format up. I'm five boxes away from finishing baby studio packing. Uh, we have to set up our trust council. Uh, the integration between the apprentices and youth stewards has already happened. Um, youth stewards are now at live for others through the tree, right? Uh, and definitely we are living for others by, by turning up. Um, so, 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 I mean, the, these ones are not difficult because you're all very mature. Um, Bernie had said that Yora have gravitatis. <laughs> You know, so so we don't think this is going to be a, uh, difficult. We, we see the value. So all these things we can keep going. But you see the lighthouse, we might be able to just set up one. I'm not sure, Saif. So I'm going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth here. Because we have to kind of wait. So, okay. So on lighthouse. I think instead of thinking it as going back and forth, back and forth, I yeah. think... Now is the time to just kind of say, okay, you already know what you want to do, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's just, when is it the right moment? When yeah, is it yeah. that, that aha moment that we can do it? Because yeah, I yeah. think it's also unhelpful in the uh, mental framework to think that you're going back and forth, back and forth, because you're not. This is not yeah. a shuttle race and shuttle run and you prove that you can do it in under 10 seconds. <laughs> Right. Which I have a tendency to do in my life. All right. And don't forget, <laughs> you know, when you do shuttle race and you stretch it out as a straight line, that's a long distance you've covered. You're only gasping for breath thinking you only covered like one meter five times. Actually, you're running, right? You're, you're doing a shuttle run, right? Right. Uh, so, so don't do that, right? So the, the point is that now you, you know already, like it's there. Yeah. It's just that the, the paradigm keeps changing in terms of the operating environment. And yeah. no one can predict even now Nobody with any can. certainty when is it going to be MCO 3.5, when I, is I, it going I, to CD. I think this is the real challenge for every organization operationally. And I think that's and that's what we you're right, having that awareness and perspective and then suddenly not be bothered by it. So that it doesn't fatigue the energy. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what what is useful now, what we have is let's ignore these dates for now. Let's see this as the sequential pathways, okay? Mm -hmm. So we have these components here. These are the things we know we need to build. So the strength was kind of being able to conceptualize and uh, coherently and robustly. Uh, the not so strong is we haven't got it out yet. And also, we, our attention on money has not been the, the best. So this is something I want to kind of Re recreate, you know, the change that we want to make uh, because it will also stress us out and fatigue us as well. In, right. in other ordinary times, it's quite easy to get a project and then do it. Now, it's, it's, it's just... Uh, so, let me finish this. Uh, so, the lighthouse, the vision is that it will then be set up in Singapore so that we can set the, the space and mobility flow and then have an understanding of the systems that we require, okay? Not the IS systems of the past. This will be slightly different. This, the digitalization will look very different. So, but the process will be observation, reflection, design, development, okay? Uh, and then we, we have the onboard, the, the cohorts three, cohorts four, so that we make altogether 100 people for the summer school. And then we have somehow a lighthouse keeper system development. Uh, and then we can implement it. Okay. And then it needs to be integrated. So you 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 set it up as modules first, huh? after that you integrate it. Um, 
and then I I I I, I thought that uh, we would basically run the summer school. So you want to integrate, you you run the summer school to observe how and discuss how it would be for global. Say if the youth stewards in Malaysia want to set lighthouses in where you are or in, in Dangkalan, you know. And, and then we have a, a quarter to look at the validation. And essentially, we do the same thing. Observation, reflection, development, implementation at the global level. And by then, all the cohorts um, would have settled in, would have bonded, would have known what their passion are, etc. Right? And then you'll be able to focus on um, setting up the lighthouses, if you so desire. Uh, and, and essentially, we will do the same thing and then end up with an integrated global operating system uh, for the BB Lighthouse uh, that has basically, uh, it's real, it's really, really grounds up and it's really, really led uh, and implemented by the uh, lighthouse keepers. So do you, do you all like this operational vision? Yeah, I think it's good. Huh? Yeah. Ajin and Dromida Nika. Uh, yeah. You want to turn on yes. your video so that I can can hear. Yes. Huh? So so that it's it's organized, you're supported, it's not chaotic, you're not kinda out there. You know, I think the days of the rapid cycle prototyping isn't I mean creatively, I think for your generation, the youth are very creative. You know, you 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 you're digital natives, yeah, and then you're growing going through pandemic. So I think it's the counterpoint, which is organizing and, and, and then putting your ideas into, into modules of system and then building uh, systems. So once you get the core right, even if the form of your uh, tech right, changes, you're able to, to morph very easily. If, if you take a tech ad adoption, at two surface level, and you don't have the understanding of the, the root principles of the why, uh, you won't be able, it's, it's, it's too shallow, you know, the interface That's is why too shallow. When yeah. we, we make pictures, right, we always tell people, in form and in substance, you see, you need both, right? You need the form, which is the structure, but if it's just form uh, and just a structure, it can still be a hollow shell. And some of you, well, most of you will know that saying as well, right? An empty vessel makes the most noise because you throw an empty can, katang, 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 it really makes a heck of a lot of noise, right? Empty mm -hmm. condensed milk tin and whatnot. But once mm -hmm. you fill it up, it's solid. It actually doesn't make much noise because it's solid. And that is the substance. And if you don't have the substance, right, it's hollow, then your programs will just look like what you see on the screen just structures and just words but there's no action there's no outcome there's no result it doesn't touch your lives it will not produce jobs it will not produce an economy it will not matter right so we we don't concentrate on one or the other we are not sacrificing one or the other it's form and substance it's just that the weightage will be slightly different for different things obviously right certain things need more substance like for example my governance right i have to write stuff which means heavy stuff i can't color it with you know uh, yellow and seven colors of the rainbow or whatever because you know that's not what it is for but if you want to express certain things like say a visual school or a school for young children then you, you use less of that and you go for more of the uh, form, the structure, colors, and visuals. So at this stage, I also want to underline that for everyone so that you do get it, that form and substance work hand in hand together. And both are just as important. It's just that depending on what you're doing, then you weight it a little bit more. This one 40%, that one 60%, this one 55%, that one you know, 45%, et etc. et cetera. Form and substance go for both. I like I like that. So mm. benchmark was one, and then form and substance. 
Okay. Yeah. So these these are our governance. We are pulling out our governance uh, pieces now already. Earlier on, we were we were doing more on the social, the character and stuff. So um, with Saif to, here with us today, um, I think now, huh, Saif, benchmark, UN benchmark, mm -hmm. and form and substance, right? Accurate, right. correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, two points. Yeah. And if uh, everyone can start reflecting and writing in about these two points, okay? That, that would really help with, with the governance pieces. Uh, Saif, question. Uh, you can see I get very stressed when things are not, <laughs> I mean, it's like not clear. I feel maybe the youth stewards uh, will need that time because you're all, I can sense you're uh, also working on your schoolwork and everything. So I think for the other group, global youth stewards we will stick with these and the and the summer school and then their inputs on the lighthouse but they won't build the lighthouse mm -hmm. huh? Ajin and Dromeda Nika correct is, mm -hmm. is that is that in line with what you feel so the lighthouse essentially will be built by uh, those who have left school I feel that it needs to be a full-time endeavor, you know, with a focus. If you, if you do it, so the, the Ellen and Tasha actually are the apprentices, so they, they can dedicate the time to, to build a, a lighthouse. Uh, then maybe we can have a, a few more youth stewards who are, who are in that place to be able to build a lighthouse. But I also think that the first few lighthouses uh, has to have quite a big input uh, by myself because of the full inclusion piece. Um, so not even sign for Bernie or, or Washima until it, it settles down. Because the full inclusion piece has a, has a very big peculiarity to it, um, which, is, which is basically the 13 years with Keith that I've had with Keith uh, and, and rewiring how full inclusion living is, full inclusion education is or we're talking about the old world's disability inclusion or special needs. And we've kind of moved away from that already. And um, I was thinking hard and good about it yesterday. I texted Saif, I think, late again. I said, I don't want to go back into any more spaces of sadness or sorrow, which means I am, I am actually done with, with that dialogue. I did the, the dialogue quite a lot. And the latest one was, I, I felt bad that I had written that open letter to Foundation for Disability Inclusion. I felt really bad and I'm sorry for it. It's, it's wrong and it's not necessary. Um, and in that case, the Foundation said no anyway. Yeah. So I'm like, boy, I had, I had compromised. Have you watched this film called The Two Popes? And, and I couldn't understand why he had said I had compromised, you know. I did. I now I understand it. I had compromised and it was wrong. So for going into lighthouses and with all these uh, partners, well, it's very attractive that we have spaces offered to us or even welcoming into the communities. I am too tired of the narrative of sorrows and cannot. And after the deep dialogue work with Ellen and Tasha, the last four days, right? Huh? Three days, Ellen, Tasha, and all the open studios and all that. We're also coming to that conclusion, right? <laughs> Respect for others, no bullying. It's simple, you know? Oh, so that's good. So yeah. I mean, so so I, I I don't know what it is. I'm feeling. I'm feeling yeah. like um, I, we we just want our own place of neutrality. Like, I think what BB Studio was about was that it cleaned out all the past narratives about anything and anything, and just stayed back to the beauty of a human person. Um, no, I think. Yeah. Uh, I would suggest, as always in my own uh, way of looking at things, move away from things like, oh, neutrality. 
you know, uh, you think it's neutral. Nothing in life is neutral. Switzerland was not neutral after World War II. You know, they made their own decision and their decision was us. That's not neutral. You know, people keep saying they were non-aligned, right? Never even joined the EU for 30 plus years. That's rubbish. They were certainly not neutral. They were looking out for numero uno and numero uno is them. So apply that, numero uno is you and your ecosystem, right? So you are uh, going for that. And if you are going for that, then what is important uh, in order to secure that? In order to secure that, I would think it is that sense of uh, safeness, safety, uh, welcomeness, comfort. And guess what? Five minutes ago, you already said, right? Those guys said, oh, you guys are a home, right? So these are all the descriptors and the adjectives that not only fit in a theoretical model, but the feelings that you have about that, right? So go for those things that will make you feel that it's a home, that it's safe, that it's secure, that it's welcoming, that it's a haven, and then forget about things like Oh, it's a neutral place. People don't judge me. Oh, it's a moving away from old paradigm. The fact that you think that it's an old paradigm is an old paradigm. So, okay, do y'all get what he said? <laughs> because clearly I'm being moved out of my self-limiting beliefs. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. no, no, I'm hearing you, Saif. Hearing, say, I'm just wanting to hear the hear it from the others because because i think the summer school and the lighthouse this the lighthouse is like a home it, it has to be a, a, a space because we have to park our library or resources and, and all right. otherwise we don't have a place to 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 work exactly you know? and then yeah. the summer school i think will have the same kind of software feeling right the the, the thing mm. but just in Fitzgerald College, Cambridge. So, and Ajin had asked the question, why in Cambridge? Is because there's a lot of stuff there that that really is uh, very rich, you know. That that we feel is yeah. it's yeah. So that is going into a space, but first we need to have our space, and then we have all our spaces. And that, also, that, Ajin, you must think that intellectually, safety. for Pengen and I, you know, uh, Cambridge is home. You know, it's home. It's where for better or for worse, we develop much of our, uh, not just theoretical understanding of the world, whether it was in economics or political science, but how we applied it as well to the wider world, right? And it was a time of great change, and yet we were always safe and secure and could afford to make mistakes uh, in that, you know, we were given a huge leeway and I, I, I think I think because we've experienced that, I think that's what we've, we've brought into Bilberry's Blue. You know? That's right. I think you, 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 you clicked for us that connection yet again, Saif. Yeah. So, and hopefully I can make the further connection. So when you want to think about the lighthouse also, so as you said, so that's the home, it's where you can park resources and you have your lighthouse keepers and all that. The slight difference or the contradistinction with the summer school is that summer school is the journey of possibilities. Remember when all of you started our conversation um, in the cohorts, right? So we talked about uh, the journey of possibilities. You know, a journey has to start, right? You can't keep on thinking of it as a journey if it's never started, right? And you've all started. Uh, in one way or another. But uh, I think together, when we are finally, you know, in that school, then it is that full-fledged kind of like commemoration ceremony of that journey. It's, a of it's the fruition. Huh? Yeah. Jin? All right. Yeah. The flower right. has become the fruit. The roots, actually. It's right from the roots yeah. to the fruits, so, right? So that's how I wanted to reframe it for all of you. Because... Otherwise, sometimes if you're not yet fixed it and then you're not making a distinction between this and that, 
then it's a bit, you know, it's hard for you to wrap your head around it as well, you see. But um, for, for me, you must make it click. And for me, when you've made it click, then I would suggest then that's when it's easier for you to move on to the next stage. So for, for me, the lighthouse and the lighthouse keepers, that's your place to have your resources, you feel safe in there and all that. Then for the summer school, that's when really it's the fruition of the labor and then you move on into that next stage of the journey of possibilities with greater confidence, greater resources. Yeah, you, you basically host the next group of students. Absolutely. Towards. And then you know? I, I, I think yeah. we've asked and answered our own question. Three mm -hmm. years, because you need you need that cycle. You need that time. <laughs> yeah, you the second year you make a mistake. It's a bit like our tripods, right? The second year yes. you make a mistake. <laughs> then the third year, the third year you really can feel that you are the big brother, big sister. Really. Yeah, big, don't forget my tripods was a two year, you know, <laughs> first year. So you know, I spent yeah. two years as a first year. <laughs> so so I th I think three years. I think two years a bit too short. Three cycles. Um, and I think you need the lighthouse and uh, and the summer school together. I think the time frame is also good simply because it is COVID. Under yeah. normal circumstances, you can artificially conflict three years into two, two years into one, 12 months into yeah. six months. Yeah. You know, you and I have both been there many, many times, whether at work, at home, in the office or whatever, right? I, I mean, pre-COVID, you know, many things are really, really, you don't want to do it, but if it has to be done, it has to be done. But in COVID, there, there's just no way you can do that because the, okay. it's not even that the odds are stacked against you. You just can't do certain things. You can't means you can't. You, you can't, right? I mean, very simple example. I, as much as I want to buy, you know, Pengen coffee and sit down for one and a half hours to ch chat with her, I can't, we can't because we'll be fined. We, we can't even go to McDonald's now and order a latte and sit down and chin wag. We cannot. It's just not even like, oh, we can pretend yeah. to be cute, you know, and do, you know, <laughs> kimchi eyes and, you know, give hearts out to people. You know, we can't even general. hug. We can't even hug. Yeah, you can't. We can't so, even comfort each other, you know. So, so my point is a serious one, which is that at the end of the day, right, um, I think the three... Uh, gives us, you know, that, that kind of uh, ability. Of course, you know, if things get better and then downstream, maybe we can shorten it from three years to two years and a bit. Who knows? But that's a separate conversation. That's a separate thing altogether. Right yeah. now, we deal with what we are dealing with now. As, so as of now, uh, we will... Where is my, uh, so I lie and I've gone way past time, uh, but this is, this is so good. Um, so back to this uh, thing here. So let's lock this down, right? Three summer schools. Okay. Three summer schools. How, how, how do I, how, how do we get around this lighthouse? One lighthouse, how? What are we going to do with the lighthouse? The lighthouse has to start already. The lighthouse has to start because the resources have to go somewhere. Hmm. Um, so, pick, which is the one lighthouse that is easiest to set up? So currently, Spectra, if they don't have COVID, sometimes I sense with the recent COVID thing, we might not have so, that going to, yeah. So yeah. this is where you, we can get uh, creative, right? As in, we set it up. It's just that COVID went into a deeper uh, crisis and therefore, you know, it's there, but, you know, it's not able to be 100%. So in this submission, this is what, so I'm, I'm drilling into this submission. So the decision yep. making is around this submission, right? So correct. We still, I mean, we still have until July 11, uh, June 11. So, uh, and the school, I think, will decide between, they have a board meeting coming this week. Mm -hmm. They also have to ask themselves, why take on this extra thing, right? So, I, I think the second week of June is where I will meet with the school leadership again. And the principal will need to have the buy-in of everybody. Um, 
and and then we'll know where is our new place. I was thinking if I don't have a new place, I will put everything into storage. I would, you would have to all stop me from something doing reckless, like giving it all away. <laughs> Which Washima is really holding me back on. Um, because the funding is very serious, if there is still no funds, uh, I, we can't pay the rental for keeping a space open. Uh, I've already moved whatever I can into my, my own home office already. Mm. Uh, and the reality of it is there's no point having a space that uh, then has, has things that uh, people can't go into. There is a point of having a space where we can lay out everything and have our uh, teaching through the space online uh, and having a space where Ellen and myself and the, the stewards here in Singapore and all that can work things through. But if we can't generate revenue, it's going to be very hard pressed because this funds, unless we can get the grants um, from SG and Naval, which I don't know when it's going to come in. So I don't think it's wise to take a space um, for, for six months, hoping that we can get a grant. I, I would mm -hmm. rather we we know for sure, you know. Mm. So, so this, this created a little bit of a snag. So, if we don't have Lighthouse, Lighthouse starts July 1, 2022, even in Singapore. Then, Ellen and Tasha can work on a different program in the interim and not be Lighthouse keepers. Because I'm also worried about the safety of uh, Ellen and Tasha if there are too many lighthouses and they're they are going round. Not only that, the last thing we will want is, because of Bilberry's Blue, we have cross-cluster infection. You know? <laughs> so, so in the end, even if we have a lot of lighthouses, we can't, I can't, I can't be the one going round and then suddenly like all these nice, beautiful communities who have trusted us, you know? Well, we should check with the two pioneer lighthouse keepers, right? Our Ellen pioneering lighthouse keepers. Yeah, Ellen and Tasha, what do you think? Right. We either here have one lighthouse. Then if it's one lighthouse, it's not a lighthouse. It's still BB Studio. <laughs> so yeah, I'm getting in. Huh? I think it really is best for us to wait till 2022 for us to set up the lighthouses. Yeah, I really think so. You really think so? Andromeda and, and mm. what do you all think? Ellen? Well, I say yes. I like it. I love BB Studio. <laughs> you like BB Studio. <laughs> so we might as well just set up one BB Studio, right? That uh, is quite central. Mm. And then we go back to being BB Studio and at least we can meet there. Um, uh, and it's one place. Yeah, one place. Yeah. Mm. And then I, mean, I can, I can, I mean, we can, we can also focus on generating revenue. Yeah. <laughs> you can see I have to focus I mean, on generating revenue. I mean, it's better than traveling here and there. I mean, for the lighthouse, it's so much better than traveling here and there. One I place know. is better. I think it's not going to work, right, Sai? The next six months, definitely. The traveling here and there, I can't. I can't even. Uh, you're sitting through. No. I can. I can honestly say the next three months is just bad. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. the next three months is just gonna be bad. So when you think about it, this is already end of May. Yeah. Right. So if you're talking the next three months, that's already June, July, August. After that, even if by some miracle, some, you know super vaccine and in large numbers are able to be churned out, then that takes another three months for it to take effect, which takes us into December, <laughs> which is yeah. end of the year. You see? And then some surprise might come up again and then we are yeah. fighting so it's this. it's very simple mathematics, right? And you also see it's very simple mathematics because uh, in some parts of America, uh, for political reasons, they already said, okay, don't need to wear masks anymore. 
right? Uh, yesterday, not yesterday, sorry, uh, six hours ago, Melbourne just went into lockdown. Oh, it did? I didn't even know that. Yeah, so, you know, they were discussing it in uh, Parliament yesterday and this morning, and then they've decided they are going into lockdown. So, Victoria, basically, right? The, the state of Victoria. Uh, Malaysia, enough said, uh, it's 8,000 a day already, although they report 7,000 plus. But, uh, you know, when you think about people who didn't report, well, that's 8,000 a day already. A day, a day, yeah. yeah. A day, yeah, a day, okay? It'll take a, um, it'll take a year for Malaysia. So, uh, India, four days ago, said, hurrah, hurrah, numbers are dropping. We can consider, you know, relaxing. Uh, less than 24 hours later, right, they jump back up again to, you know, 400,000 oh, infections. 400,000. So I'm not doing this to depress anybody. I'm saying that because Pengen is asking about what the next six months look at, uh, as a political and social scientist, I'm just telling you, this is how you try to read the tea leaves and make sense of the situation. And the situation yeah, is such yeah. that even in yeah. Singapore, we now say, okay, I give you first shot, and then you wait eight weeks for your second shot. So that already tells you that, uh, you know, the kind of situation that we are in right now, right? First shot, and then I'll give you your second one eight weeks from now. Because why? We don't have enough vaccines. I have another thought now. We get a small space. Put the rest of the things that we don't need in storage. The rest of things that we really, really donate, we did not donate it all away to organizations who need it. You know, we, don't, we, don't, we don't spend any more energy. We spend very minimal energy. Our energy will be then spent on, on online, on the youth stewardship program, and really looking at the... Um, the, the if you are very clear on which is the one that you really, really need and which is the one you really I think, need. I think we have to follow the money. The money is we need to generate the revenue. Uh, since the lighthouse is, is space, it's not going to be real anyway. Even Tasha is, is saying and Ellen are saying, you know, they can't move around. We can't move around. Absolutely. Yeah. So give up the idea. Move all the ideation into this grant. Couple the two together. To start in July 1st, 2022. Let's do that. So for this grand pitch and the summer school and the lighthouses locally and global, it's, it's the same program actually. They go hand in hand, the space and the summer school. Right? So, so you need to help us find an articulation of that, the tree and something. I don't know. I'm sure something inspirational will come to you. But this, that for the grant, is as simple as that. That's it. Three years, three cycles. Yeah? Mm. It's it's really the journey of possibilities for the stewards. Yep. Then then uh, that frees us from having to spend any more time and energy and, and resource and focus on, on this. Then if we get our grant, then uh, we we will see what's the timeline again. So that's and we will know that by June tenth, June eleventh. Yeah. And they will invite us to, to, to flash out the pitch. Then we'll set up another series of, of, of meetings um, to flash out the pitch. So that's around, uh, I think, the August time frame, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. So that's, that's, at least we'll nail down this plan. Yeah, August to October time frame. So October thirty first. So, so we we we'll just do like five days. Same thing. No 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 need. We don't need all these three months to flesh mm -hmm. it out because we've already done the upfront work. So so that's that's all we need. We just need a very elegant OFI, and hopefully get good news here, and then then we do this. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and then we will stay very opportunistic to other uh, people who want to fund the summer school in the lighthouse. And of course, we can con continue the dialogue uh, and, 
and and have that be funded and be realized so that's that's that all done already so then the the only thing that is left is basically the bb studio becoming bb studio again <laughs> at some stage huh? no i have to get out i have four weeks that's why i'm a bit panicked but at least the thinking is there the decision it could just be going to spectra but spectra is a bit far for natasha i think but i think spectra is a good place i think we should just have it in spectra why not but, huh why not what's that as in why not as why not right? yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's already done so if it's spectra then the week of june 7 to 11 would just be it and uh, we would just have one then the rest are more very light touches already we won't actually do a, a, a physical space with them okay so it's not a baby lighthouse I don't know. The contract is drafted as BB Lighthouse. Prototype, maybe. Okay? I think prototype is allowed for... Prototyping for, is allowed. I yeah. think prototyping is allowed for, for this. Okay, then we will have a one prototype. Okay? For Spectra, it will be one prototype. Did I, did I go back and forth already? Yes, I did. What's the final decision? One prototype. Okay, one prototype. Uh, no prototype how to flesh out, right? One prototype so that we can flesh out this proposal. Sounds like a good plan. Mm. Yeah? You need it. Otherwise, you don't know what you're talking about, right? <laughs> yeah, you need it. You need it. And Ellen and Tasha have to be the one to set it up. Okay, perfect plan then. Perfect plan. So June, July, we have the prototype setting it up. August, October, we have the materials to put it into the full proposal submission. And then we will roll everything out only in June, July. Can't be a perfect, more perfect plan than this. Mm. Yeah. So I'll, I will rewrite our annual plan and then that's it. This will be what we'll be doing for the rest of uh, this year and probably first half of next year. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody has any questions? Not to me. Mm, Andromeda, anything that comes to you? Oh, sorry, I, I need to... Uh, you go already? Okay, yeah. I, think, I think we've got done all clear, right? Yeah? All okay. clear, all in agreement? Okay. Oh, I wish I see later. You see later, I will just set it up for you because I'm toggling two meetings. So both of you will, will mm, post yeah. and record that meeting. Okay? Thank you all so right, much, everybody. Right. Five Thursdays to Cambridge, completed. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.